When you start to wrap up your project, you're probably looking at this, the back of your motherboard, and you're trying to determine you know, where things are plugged in, what things you're gonna plug in where, and what those symbols actually mean. In this video, I'm gonna cover the back of the motherboard, I'm gonna talk through the individual ports, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why you need to install these antennas if you got a Wi-Fi board, even if you're planning on using Ethernet. This is the Project 7 series where I go into long form, detailed review of how to build a gaming PC here in 2021. If you're into gaming performance content like this, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, maybe even consider subscribing. So starting off, why do you need to connect these? Well, specific ports on your motherboard are for these antennas. And what these are gonna power is not just your Wi-Fi. Yes, this is how Wi-Fi 6 will work. And these are the connectors for Wi-Fi 6 for this board. Your Bluetooth is also likely to go through these antennas. And if you don't have it connected, your Bluetooth signal is going to be horrible. How horrible? Well, if you take this off and just sit this far away with the keyboard, guess what? It won't connect. That's how bad it would be. So simply screw these on when you are ready to put your PC in the final place, which is what I'm gonna do right now. Simple matter of sliding it onto the screw head and twisting to the right. It's not complicated. It's not really designed to be complicated. Then because this is an antenna, you can bend and turn it however you want. Now, one thing about these antennas is they tend to be polar in nature, meaning they broadcast in this way or this way. They don't always broadcast 360 degrees. So what I have found best is to have one antenna pointing one way, the other antenna pointing the opposite. I do this for my routers, and I do this for my PCs that do have this kind of antenna setup. This way, you are ensured at least one of these antennas is giving you optimal performance. Additionally, if you want, you can angle them out a little bit like that too. It's up to you. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the ports themselves. Starting at the top, this right here is an old PS2 port. Most keyboards do not support this standard anymore. We've pretty much all gone to USB, which makes it kind of interesting to see one on this machine, but c'est la vie. Next to that, you're gonna see these black ports. Now these black ports are typically standard USB 2.0 in this day and age. It used to be that those actually could mean something, but I haven't seen that in quite a while. So treat these black USB ports as 2.0. Now this is gonna become increasingly important in the future when we talk about how to flash your bio. Next up below that, we have a display port and an HDMI port. I'm gonna go through an entire video talking about monitors and what those ports actually mean. Just know HDMI is typically used to connect to things like televisions. Display port is normally used to connect to things like monitors. There's also some differences in the standard as it comes to Nvidia. Again, we'll talk about that in a future video. One thing I really like about display ports though, the connector tends to have a clip. That means it is a very secure connection between the PC and the monitor. HDMI does not have a clip, meaning it pulls out very, very easily. Below that, at least on this board, we have SS10 and SS20. What in the world does that mean? SS, which is a horrible name, I think we can all figure out why that's a horrible name. Well, SS in this instance stands for super speed. So super speed USB port. That became what was at the time the novel concept of USB 3.0. People called it SS for super speed. Well, as USB 3.0 has improved and increased different standards with different thorough puts, they've had to name them different things. So SS10 is a more advanced version of USB 3.0. SS20 is not only a newer standard that also incorporates USB-C, which is a kind of connector, but it is also a higher throughput. So those are those two ports. In this instance, these are red, and then the USB-C port is the very nice cylindrical rectangular 
however you would describe that kind of a port. Very useful for connecting a mobile phone and some other things to your PC. Not so useful for mice, keyboards, that sort of thing. Below that we have a bank of four USB 3.0 SS connectors. That is gonna be the standard speed for USB 3.0. They're gonna plug in right there. Next to that, you have a 2.5 gigahertz ethernet port. Now, this is a little bit of a weird naming convention because a lot of the ethernet cables that you're gonna have access to tend to top out at about one gig. This, that is gigabit, not gigabyte. Gigabit is the one that you basically have to move the decimal point one number in order to get to the actual number that most of us are used to, which is megabytes or gigabytes. So in this instance, it's advertising 2.5 gigabits. So you have to have a certain type of ethernet cable and a router in order to be able to take advantage of that. This kind of a port is really only going to be highly useful if you are connecting to say a NAS and you have the proper equipment network-wise set up so that you can actually do that. Down here again is our Wi-Fi 6. We have the Toslink right here. This is where an optical cable will connect if you have an optical external sound system. We have the surround sound here in the black. Now that is interesting because normally these are color-coded, but they do have little labels. I actually like this convention a little bit better because I can read exactly what these ports do, and I don't have to look up the color code. And the red, we also have another output right there. So those are the ports that are on the back of this card. One additional set of ports though. Down here on our graphics card, we do have DisplayPort and HDMI ports as well. This is critical for gaming. The monitor has to be connected to the graphics card. It will not work properly if you solely connect it to the motherboard. Use the motherboard if you are troubleshooting. You can use it for a different monitor you're not planning on playing games on, allowing the iGPU in the CPU itself to power that external secondary monitor. But anything you play games on has to be connected directly to your discrete graphics card. That's what these are called. So it has to be plugged into here. And then of course you have power on the bottom. So that is the rundown. That is project seven. The next thing we need to do is update the BIOS, which is why it's critically important that you know which ports you are working with in order to make sure you can properly update your BIOS.